Hey what's up, my name's Cameron and this is Design Based, a channel where I post about everything design and today's video is just going to be a little bit of insight into my process and just show a bit of behind the scenes on a mark you might have seen already. So what we're doing today is going over the Logitech MX, there was a dribble playoff and I entered this with a identity as well as some animation. So we're just going to go over what I did, how I got these ideas and just show a bit more into my process. You may have already seen this on dribble and if not you should probably go follow me at CMR. And Giles, but other than that, let's get further into this and kind of explain what I did and what makes sense here. So, for the actual purpose of this playoff, you were supposed to design kind of a new, intriguing way to show the Logitech MX series, and they have an MX mark that they kind of wanted you to stay within. But from their examples, they have it rendered a lot of different 3D ways and in different materials, so really just play off this MX form and see how you can do it. So, I did that, but there was also a ton of people entering with actual logos, and even though this wasn't the contest. It was something that intrigued me and I wanted to play with too. So first things first, we're going to go over the process of how I made a Logitech MX logo and what my reasoning was and really what I did. So let's get right into that now. So to get started with my logo for Logitech MX, I really just opened Illustrator and didn't do any research or anything. Just because this was a dribble playoff, this is something I'm doing in my free time and it doesn't matter too much, it's just kind of stretching the design muscles. But what is Logitech MX? Without actually researching or opening up anything, Logitech MX is a series of peripherals, so keyboards, specifically mice the most importantly, and just a series that really enables a lot more workflow improvement and it's just really ergonomic allows a lot of cool features. On the mouse there's a bit of a side pad you can press and then using that you can use gestures so pressing that down and moving your mouse to the right you can set it up to move your windows or switch your desktop view if you're on a Mac and just really cool things there so I use a Logitech MX Master mouse and it's really cool I really like it it's good for the workflow so that is the main reason I was just so intrigued to do this. So for me, the things I wanted to capture most in this mark were that MX enables some flow. They have a program called Flow too, which is actually really cool. You can drag your mouse between different computers more or less as if they were multi-monitors and it works pretty well. It's a little finicky sometimes, but super duper useful if you have a setup like me where you're sometimes using a laptop, sometimes using a computer desktop, and just super helpful there. So capturing this flow, not only in that concept, but just how easy it makes your workflow was a big thing for me. as well. I think just capturing how easy it is and just how it's kind of a quite perfected and simplistic form of technology that's another big thing I wanted to capture. And alongside that, I also just wanted to capture kind of the innovativeness that this adds to tech, because there's a lot of mice and a ton of different features they have. But for me, as a creative and a designer and someone who's just on the computer a lot, this is my favorite mouse I've ever used for really just capturing this technology well and innovating where it needs to without adding any dumb redundancies or stupid features that I'll never use. Altogether, this ease, innovativeness, and flow is really what the Logitech MX series is about for me. So this is what I tried to capture with my mark. The way I start lots of projects, if I don't really have too much of a brief, or if I've already gone over my brief and just want to play around, is with type. So I just typed out the letters M and X and really just played around, scrolled through fonts, and I think a really great way to start is just to look through fonts, see how existent fonts render these characters because you might picture an M or an X one way in your mind but there's just so many cool ways you can show them off and so many completely different ways they can be rendered so for a mark like this type is 90% of it so really just looking at different type options is a great way to get ideas. You'll see I came out with a few different styles some more reminiscent of just the big bold chunky sans serif that they kind of already have going some a lot more flowy and rendering a lot of curves and at the start I really wanted to find a cool way to show curves and paths and you'll see that multiple hooped M that I did. I really liked the way that looks and played around, tried to get an X working, but ultimately I think it felt a little too unprofessional and just a little too much for what I was going for. So I ended up going a little more towards with the bold sans serif, but with a little more personality than it could have. So how do I capture these keywords that I wanted, like flow and ease? Well, I think to me the biggest thing, which sometimes can be seen as a cliche, but it's arrows and it's just a great way to show progression between different things and being such a simple geometric shape, it works super well for fitting into a mark and you'll see here with the final mark, I have it kind of both implicit and explicitly shown and I think that works great because even if you're not recognizing it as an arrow, you're getting the general form of it, but it's also not in your face just branding it with an arrow, it's really just a subtle element and it works great here. Lately in the design community though, 
there's been a ton of talk about arrows and how they're overused or how people own them, but really for the sake of this, I just thought an arrow was a great way to kind of combine all these features, show it, and add a bit of subtle iconography to an otherwise more simplistic mark. And really most of my time was just spent fine tuning this idea and really just making it look good and because it's going to be a mark for a product line it has to be really versatile because in some cases it'll be massive on a banner of a website, in some cases it might be a tiny insignia or little emblem on an actual mouse or keyboard so you want to make sure it's versatile and it'll work in a lot of different backgrounds, sizes, cases, just all sorts of things there. You may do this by just finding one perfected mark but again since this was a bit of an exploration for me I wanted to see some different ways it could work and tried out inverting it, putting it on a negative background or using just an outline and all of these things looked really cool so actually ended up posting it with all three of these options. I think truly they could all work if you wanted to just choose one on your own, or if you wanted to make the whole family and pick and choose what goes where, I think they'd all work great for that. But ultimately just making a quick MX mark that really captures what I wanted to, I am quite happy with the outcome, and I think it does capture a professional ease and flow for the MX series that really I think could truly work with them, and I'm pretty stoked with how it came out in the end. And then on to part two of this, which is kind of what the actual playoff was about, and this is the motion I did. So like I said at the start here, really the brief was just show off this general MX letter form a way that was unique and just show it off in whatever way you want, and that's what I did. I don't think it had to be motion, but I chose it for a couple of reasons, one of which just being this is a personal thing, so I'm entering the contest, motion is something I want to get better at, so it's a great opportunity there, but also I find just the way they had their original one and I just thought the potential with motion here would be a lot more fun than if I just made a static design, so that's what I did. I'll start this part off by saying that I am in no means an expert at After Effects, I definitely didn't organize my files, and there's a lot of stuff you could hate watching this, so instead of being a tutorial, this is definitely a lot more of a just kind of stop motion step by step of my process and just show off the most important things I did or some of the cool stuff I learned, so let's get into that. So I started off by just kind of importing this MX mark in from Illustrator. There's tons of great tutorials on how to do that if that's something you're trying to do, but I highly recommend it. It's a great way to get a vector form into After Effects, and I did that. The first thing I did was make a gradient, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but I chose to use a four color gradient, and this was great. It really allowed a lot of control and moving things along the way, but I set a few colors that felt relevant. Their main color is a blue, and I wanted to keep with that. And then from there, I just played with it, I decided to animate the gradient over time. So you'll see here as I drag along the timeline that these points are moving and really just add a bit of dynamicism to the gradient. And then from there, I decided to add some cool distorts. So I added a mesh warp and that just further moves the points a little and I animated that. On top of that, I added this ripple, which you're definitely seeing here as well as a twirl. And these are just kind of some more cool ways to make the gradient a little more exciting and just have a little more personality. But ultimately I know this gradient is gonna be cropped to the letter form. So I didn't do too, too much fine tuning. It's more of just a cool little abstract abstract way to do it, and at the start, this was kind of my only goal, but after doing it, I decided it had a lot more potential, so I added some more things on top. The second cool thing you'll see if you watch this mark that is gonna stick out to you is the kind of, I'd almost call it a slinky effect, I'm sure there's a much better name for it, but you can see that copies come out from behind the letter, so this part at the start almost looks 2D, but scrubbing along, it comes out all the way and really just extends, so there's, it looks like five copies that just come out of it, and I thought that was a really cool way to show innovation and kind of infinite possibilities and just add some more cool techie depth. But how did I do that? This was all done using repeaters and this is something I just learned about for doing this but it worked great and really just using the repeater transformation effect you can adjust the position, scale, the copies, offset and there's a ton of stuff you can do. You could probably animate how many copies there are, there's some cool fade outs and stuff but for this I just kept it at five copies and really just animated where they're positioned and it made a really cool kind of wireframe 3D slinky like effect and I was super stoked with that. So now what you're seeing is pretty much what I thought would be the final mark in until I started experimenting a little more and I wanted a little more to it, just a little more fun and something a little more personal because right now this mark kind of fits with everything and it's a couple techniques together that A I watch tutorials for at some point and B lots of people have so just making this mark a little more of its own is really where I kind of stumbled across a happy accident and found a super cool effect that I decided was exactly what I was looking for so let's show that part off. 
So if you look at my final composition, the way I have the effects, it's gonna take a ton of time just to load every frame, but you can see that it has this kind of LCD screen style effect on it, and I thought this was a super, super cool way of showing the tech kind of relation to it, making it look a little more digital and just adding some fun. So I saw some tutorials on YouTube. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but I wasn't too happy with most of them, and I ended up with something that works great and I really, really like, which I will show you now. So as you can see here, this kind of effect that I used really just takes it from what it started as. You'll see I added a bit of glitch here too. But with a couple iterations of it, it ended up being a sweet LCD screen effect and it even has kind of some equivalent of like dead pixels, which I really like. And to be honest, I have no clue how I achieved those dead pixels, but they look awesome and they worked well. So with a bit of fine tuning, they actually made it in the final cut and that was completely a happy accident there, but it worked great. But in terms of doing this, the main effect I use is called CC ball action and it kind of is a mix of a bit of a pixelation and just a filter but really the way I used it just allowed it to look like an LCD screen and with a bit of glow on top too it feels like each of these individual pixels or panels is glowing so with a couple stacks of the CC ball action it made a really 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 great techie screen thing and if you're into this let me know I might actually make a tutorial on how I achieved this part in the end and a couple recommendations there just because as someone who didn't know how to do this after looking at tutorials there was just so much I learned along the way here that really helped me out but essentially just by combining this gradient some of the repeater and this action this LCD kind of style in the front it made a really cool abstract mark that I think fits well and worked together really really well for this case because I knew it was a gif another thing I did was I chose to make sure that the gradient lines up at the start and the end and that just means that it can loop infinitely and work forever and I won't show you how I did this but really all it takes is keeping the exact same position or whatever you're changing keyframe as the first frame and the last one and then because of that no matter what if those two frames are the same as it loops it'll work together perfectly and altogether really worked super well for me I'm really happy with the gif and the video output of this and I think it's just a cool kind of futuristic techie thing that shows a bit of the simplicity easing and just how cool this MX series truly is so another fun experiment and I'm pretty happy with how that ended too alright so there we have it those were kind of a couple of my takes on the Logitech MX series and how I might render it either as its own identity or as a cool animation. I know this video is kind of a little all over the place and I made a mark at the start which I animated a different mark at the end but really was just kind of using this brief as a bit of inspiration and just a cool starting place to have some fun, learn some new things and like I said in previous videos I think that's just the best use of design contests just to have some fun, learn some new things and maybe get some more eyes on your work. So I had lots of fun with that. Let me know if you like this style of video where I just kind of recorded my process, give you a bit of insight and just showed off what I did. This is something I can do quite easily, just run the camera when I'm doing some work and I think it's going to be something that you'll see more of on this channel channel in the future, hopefully as a way to get some more uploads coming consistently. If you've used Logitech MX products or are interested in them, let me know your thoughts on them and maybe how you'd describe them or if you would have done anything differently with this marker animation. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you're not already, it will help me out a ton. I have some cool videos planned in the future and gonna hopefully do a kind of more in-depth process video on a couple part series of me making something and being a little cryptic here because you'll find out more later, but stay tuned for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun and the most in-depth video this channel seen yet, so hope you enjoy that. But otherwise, I hope you have a great day and go design something great.